Autumn in New Jersey. Oh, hey, what's going on? I didn't see you there. I was just going on a walk right now, trying to clear my mind, because I tend to be an overthinker. And I've just been thinking about all these great jazz musicians right now, because I just can't seem to get my mind off of the jazz. But you know what? Since you're here now, this is great because you can act as my therapist and I could vent all my jazz thoughts to you and you're interested in jazz, right? Cool. Well then, how about you follow me to the comfy chair and thanks again for appeasing my mental health. Isn't this great that we can utilize the internet to expose more people to great jazz music more than we ever could before? I actually think this is one of the main reasons that jazz is coming back because it's so much easier for people to freely explore any kind of music they want without having to pay for it. So naturally, more and more people are just discovering what's up. So I feel like there's two main groups of people who would be interested in this video. The first would be just regular music fans, non-musicians who have at the very least just become recently interested in jazz and not really sure who to check out or people who have been listening to jazz for a while and want to find out what else is there to listen to. The second group of people are musicians who are aspiring to learn how to play jazz and want to know what to listen to so that they can educate themselves and further their understanding of the jazz style and language. Now, first of all, everyone who's in group two should also be in group one. Why are you even trying to learn how to play jazz in the first place if you're not even interested in listening to a lot of jazz music? What do you think, the theory and education is going to give you all the answers and you don't really care about straight ahead jazz, you just think you're going to be the next Alan Holdsworth or something? I mean, come on. The reason why jazz musicians are actually able to play music that authentically sounds like jazz is because they're very familiar with the language. So, the more classic jazz you've heard, the better you could understand the sound, and the better you can actually produce some music that sounds like jazz. There's really no secret. It would be the same thing with any style of music. You know, how about techno? You may think like, hey, I've learned things like music production, how to use logic and various music fundamentals, etc. So, you might think, I want to make a new techno track. but what makes you think that your results would sound anything like what authentic techno sounds like if you haven't spent any time listening to all of the proper techno that came before you? still produce something that is musically nice, but it probably won't be stylistically accurate. Alright, I'm rambling, so let's just get into it. I just want to present you with a compiled list of all-time great jazz musicians who you just really can't go wrong with. Now, as you'll see, I'll only be going up to, you know, roughly a certain time period, generally speaking. While there's still contemporary jazz innovation happening today that I love and respect so much, you know, I didn't really want to go too far into modern times because a lot of these musicians are still alive and playing today, and obviously it's impossible for me to name every great jazz musician here. And I didn't want to imply by who I list or who I may not list that this person is better than that person and all that, so I figured I'd just avoid all that. If anyone wants me to list more contemporary jazz greats in another video, just let me know. I'll also be leaving out some all-time great jazz legends too, I'm sure, because like I said, how could I get to everyone in this short video? So if there's any one of your favorites that I don't name here, please don't get offended. This is really just a still large list of undisputed all-time jazz greats which I'm sure any real jazz fan out there would agree deserve to be on this list. So you can't really go wrong with any of these people. So when I do this, I'll sort of be sticking to a chronological order to an extent, but not totally. But 
I'll also be grouping musicians into category by the instruments they play for a chunk of it as well. And I tried to hit all of the main, you know, instruments utilized in jazz. It's not like I didn't want to give everyone love. If I didn't hit your instrument, I'm sorry, you know, to all the harmonica players out there, you know, can't win them all. And finally, before I get into it, I'm just going to name most of the people on this list, but for certain people, I'll probably, you know, mention different things if I happen to think that there's some sort of significant importance attached to them. So they may be something like a prominent composer or a band leader or a major stylistic innovator or whatever comes into my head. All right. So let's just get into it now. Okay. Got my list here. So let's go. Now, because this is a channel that is mainly for guitar players, although all musicians can potentially learn from a lot of my videos as well, but because of this, I'm just going to start with all the guitar players on this whole list right here, just to show some love, alright? So, this is what I got. I got Freddie Green, Charlie Christian, Wes Montgomery, Barney Kessel, Johnny Smith, Grant Green, Kenny Burrell, Joe Pass. Jim Hall, George Benson, Pat Martino, and finally, this is one of my guitar teachers who's so great and I've learned so much from, and you can too as well, and that would be the great Rodney Jones. Alright, so now that we got all the guitar players out of the way, let's go back. I'm going to start generally at the beginning, and this is really at the beginning of recorded jazz, alright, and there's a ton of things I'm leaving out, but I'm going to start with the majorly expected Louis Armstrong, all right? So he basically defined the melodic sound of jazz all the way up into Charlie Parker, pretty much. So the important recordings, you know, in his small combos, you have the Hot 5 and the Hot 7 recordings, which are great. And then you also have the recordings of him with the Fletcher Henderson Orchestra, which are also really good and feature a lot of other great jazz musicians as well, all right? Now, Next person is going to be Sidney Bechet, who is also an early, you know, jazz innovator, and he was a clarinet player, and he's one of the only two clarinet players that'll be on this whole list, all right? Next, I'm going to say Duke Ellington, and I'm sure a lot of you guys know that name, and Duke is one of the only people who is not only a great band leader, and you can learn about a lot of other musicians just through tracing his career, but he was also one of the main and greatest composers of jazz music as well, all right? And I'm going to give you one album of his called Blue Feeling. I'm not going to list any other albums in this whole video, but this album is great because if you're familiar with Duke Ellington at all, you know, a lot of his famous compositions are, you know, a little bit later in his career, but this Blue Feeling album is a lot more of the early stuff, and there's a ton of it, and it's fantastic, and it really defines a nice, early, you know, orchestrated sound of jazz, so check that one out. All right, next I have Coleman Hawkins and Lester Young, which are your two, you know, tenor saxophone innovators, both very important, obviously. I think I'm going to add Ben Webster to this little group of early, great tenor sax innovators as well, all right? Next, I have Roy Elridge, who is a trumpet player. Next, I have Johnny Hodges, who is an alto sax player. All right. Now, I'm going to get into some of the famous big band leaders here. All right. So, I have Count Basie. You know, we can learn a lot about other musicians who played with him as well. Chick Webb, who is another great band leader, and he really defined the New York style swing during that era. And then also, you have Artie Shaw. Stan Kenton, you know, Benny Goodman, who's the only other clarinet person on this list, so that's a lot of the big, big bands, all right? All right, next, we have Mary Lou Williams, who's just one of the greatest female jazz musicians who ever lived, and she hung with all the cats back in the day, and she's awesome, so check her out. All right, now I'm going to give you three of the biggest stride piano players of the time, so that would be... Willie the Lion Smith, Earl Hines, and Art Tatum. All right, now I'm going to go into all the great singers, or at least a few of the main ones, all right? Ella Fitzgerald, Billie Holiday, Sarah Vaughn, Chet Baker, and of course, Frank Sinatra. And Chet Baker also played the trumpet. 
All right, now let's go a little bit later, you know, to Bebop and stuff like that. So, you got Charlie Parker, of course. What more can I say? Charlie Parker. You got Dizzy Gillespie. Thelonious Monk, who is also one of the primary composers of jazz music as well, and definitely innovative and unique, and you need to get into Monk. Bud Powell. Oh my god, how could I forget Bud Powell? Piano players. Bud Powell, you know, the prominent bebop piano player. Next, we have Dexter Gordon, the incredible tenor sax player. Then we have Kenny Clark, one of the innovators of bebop drumming. All right, next, we have Art Blakey, who is a drummer who led the Jazz Messengers and another great band that you can explore the career of and see all the musicians who played with them and a ton of classic stuff just through checking out all the Jazz Messengers records. All right. Who we got next? The person that everyone on this video already knows, Miles Davis. You know, it's funny, I kind of glossed over Miles, but I really should say, you know, in addition to people like Duke Ellington and, you know, Art Blakey, Miles is probably one of the number one musicians that you want to trace their career for because you'll just learn about so many other great jazz musicians easily just by going through the career of Miles Davis, all right? And... Obviously, he's one of the greatest, so check out Miles. All right, then we got Sonny Rollins. Horace Silver, who also, you know, is one of the main composers of the hard bop era. Then we got John Coltrane. Of course, we all know him, one of the greatest. We got Clifford Brown, the trumpet player. Max Roach, another great drummer. And then I have Cannonball Adderley, another great alto sax player. All right. Now we got some more of the West Coast cool jazz type stuff happening at the time and stuff kind of related to that. So we have Dave Brubeck, piano player, band leader, Paul Desmond, of course, who played with him on sax. We have Lee Konitz, Lenny Tristano, and Warren Marsh, all right? And Konitz and Warren Marsh were sax players, uh, alto and tenor respectively, and Lenny Tristano played the piano, and he kind of had his own school of jazz you know that a lot of people like to get into as well so some different stuff there all right now we're gonna move a little bit later and i'm gonna give you three people that i think you know are not only great instrumentalists but also you know main composers that contributed to you know the history and the songbook of jazz and that would be wayne shorter of course the sax player uh, tenor. Then we have Joe Henderson, another tenor sax player. And then we have Cedar Walton, the piano player. All right, from here, I think I'm mainly going to keep to, you know, instrument categories. So, what do we have? We got the piano players here, and this one probably had the most because it's the easiest one to think of all these people where it's like, oh, well, how can I not put this person on the list? So, here's all the other piano players I got in no particular order Herbie Hancock, McCoy Tyner. Red Garland, Wynton Kelly, Bill Evans, Chick Corea, Keith Jarrett, Oscar Peterson, and Barry Harris. All right, now let's get into the bass players. Ray Brown, Ron Carter, Paul Chambers, Charles Mingus, who admittedly is probably one of the people on this whole list that I'm the least familiar with. I've got to really listen to more of him. Then we have Niels Henning, or Seth Penderson, or NHOP, I don't know how to pronounce it, uh, and Oscar Pettiford. All right, now let's go to the trumpet players. We got Freddie Hubbard, Lee Morgan, Kenny Dorham, Fats Navarro, and Woody Shaw. We've got a few more singlet people here. I have Ornette Coleman, who is a sax player, who was basically one of the head figures of the avant-garde jazz movement. I got Stan Getz, who's just another great melodic and tenor sax legend. Then I got Antonio Carlos Jobim, who is the primary bossa nova, you know, Latin jazz composer who wrote all the great Latin jazz compositions that we're all familiar with, all right? And I've barely even talked about Latin jazz of any sorts on this channel yet, but there's still a ton of great stuff in that whole world, so make sure you don't neglect it. Oh my god, I almost forgot Michael Brecker, too. One of the greatest tenor sax players of all time. You don't want to forget him. All right, now I'm going to go to some more drummers. We got Jimmy Cobb, Elvin Jones, Tony Williams, Lewis Hayes, Billy Higgins, Roy Haynes, and Jack D. Jeanette. All right, next I'm going to list a few great jazz organists. So we have 
Jimmy Smith, Joey D. Francesco, who was a little bit later, but rest in peace to him, another great organist. We got Jack McDuff, and we got Jimmy McGriff. And also, I just want to interrupt, because I knew I would leave people out on this list, but I just remembered, you know, I have to put him on for piano players. You gotta include Ahmad Jamal as well, alright? So, what do we got next? Alright, now I'm gonna give you a few of the jazz trombone players. So, we got J.J. Johnson, Tommy Dorsey, who also led a prominent big band, Curtis Fuller, Kai Winding, and Slide Hampton. Now, I'm also going to give you the band, the Modern Jazz Quartet, and all their original members as well, which included John Lewis on piano, Milt Jackson on vibes, Percy Heath on bass, and Connie Kay on drums. And finally, just because I had Milt Jackson on vibes, I'm going to end with one more vibes player, and that would be Bobby Hutcherson. Alright? So, there's my list for you. I hope it's good enough. Alright, if you've made it to the end of the video, I really appreciate that. That means a lot. I'm glad you enjoyed it. And we're just going to leave it there. So, in the next episode, Hope you're ready for the next episode. Hey. I'm just going to be talking a little bit about the confusing and subjective topic of what am I actually thinking about when I'm playing jazz for real. Alright? So, hope you're looking forward to that. That's it. So if you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate it if you gave it a like and consider becoming a subscriber as well as a contributor to Patreon where for $5 a month you get all the PDFs that come out on this channel and if you think anyone else would enjoy this content, please share it with them as well and I will see you guys in episode 49. Swinging and playing the blues. That's what we, that's what we about. I try to help you.